Blog Talk Radio. Stevie B's Media Production is a part of the Shellcaster Network. The proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ by members of the Churches of Christ. With your host, Stevie R. Butler. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. You are my protector and you are my provider and my deliverer. There's no other help I know. You are my protector and you are my provider and my deliverer. Listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show.
Good evening, wherever you are in the world listening to this radio broadcast. Stevie B's Media Production presents What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. I'm your host this evening, Stevie R. Butler. And this radio show is being broadcast from Stevie B Media Production at the Carolina Studio in the great state of North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just grateful for the privilege to be able to bring you a program where we as Christians and members of the Churches of Christ can share our faith and preach and teach the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ on a weekly basis. If you'd like to contact us while we're on the air this evening, just give us a call to the live show at 713 955 zero five zero eight or you can go to the blog talk radio website and listen to the show live there there are over 1700 live shows on that website and you will consistently find these radio shows on pages one through four of that website you should find this show on page one of the website this evening just click on the blog talk radio website and you'll be able to find these shows very easy you'll see my big old smile on my advertisement there. I think you really enjoy what you're hearing on these programs. If you have any questions or comments for any of my special guests or co-hosts on this radio program, you can send your emails to my new email address, butlersteve1009 at yahoo.com, or you can call Stevie B Media Production at the Carolina Studio at 910-491-6405. Now, again, this program is brought to you by members of the Churches of Christ, and if you need any assistance in locating a congregation in your area, Please feel free to contact us. Now, folks, get out your Bibles and study along with us here on the What a Word from the Lord radio show. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Before we go into our program for this evening, I would ask that you bow with me in a word of prayer that we may thank God for this opportunity. Our most kind, gracious, loving Heavenly Father, the Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to go through the various activities of the day and placing it on our hearts that we are on this broadcast and we are prepared now to present a portion of your holy and divine word. Father, pray that you will be my special guest speaker on the show this evening, Tyler R., as he breaks unto our listeners the bread of life, and also my co-host, Isa Mullins, who, as they serve our communities in preaching and teaching the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And we pray that you'll be with their families that support their efforts as well. They may continue to sow the seed of the kingdom. Father, we pray that you'll be with our listeners who are listening via blog talk radio as well as through social media. We pray that they may listen well, that they may consider their eternal stance before you and that their hearts may be pricked. And it will cause them to ask the question, what must I do? To be saved. Father, thank you so much for sending your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who died such a cruel death on Calvary's cross. We recognize that without such a sacrifice, we will not have a hope of eternal life. Father, even now, we ask you to forgive us for the transgressions of our own heart. We know our flesh is weak, and we often fall short of thy will. For I pray that you will continue to bless us and keep us and love us all the days of our lives. And if we have been faithful until death, Father, pray that you will save us. For it's in Christ's name we do ask it all. Amen. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. In the first segment of the broadcast, my special guest speaker is Tyler Arb. He serves as the evangelist for the Bell Road Church of Christ there in Montgomery, Alabama. He'll be making his proclamation of the gospel of Christ. And in the Community Corner segment, I will not have a guest on the show this evening. I had a last-minute cancellation for that segment, and so I will not have a guest in the Community Corner. And my co-hosts are... Isa Mullins, he serves the Church of Christ there in Cary, North Carolina. He'll be making this proclamation of the gospel of Christ to close out the show. So open up your Bibles and open your minds, and let's have a great show. After the break, the next voice should be that of my special guest speaker, Tyler R. Enjoy the show. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. It ain't easy. Sometimes it gets hard down here, Lord. Sometimes it gets rough, so rough, so rough. Sometimes it gets tough for me. Has anybody been long? Has anybody been sad, broken hearted and sad? Have you even? 
Listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show.
Give your attention to the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now my special guest speaker, Tyler R. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tyler Ard. I am the minister of the Bell Road Church of Christ located in Montgomery, Alabama. Um, I've been preaching there for for three years now. I made three years on April the 3rd, and I'm just excited to be here with you on this evening. I'm here with my good friend, uh, Stevie B, and working alongside Stevie B's media production team under the theme, What a Word from the Lord. And I want to second that by acknowledging the fact that there is indeed there is indeed a word from God on on tonight. I'm excited. I'm, I'm grateful for this opportunity that has been extended to me, and I'm grateful uh, for the opportunity to be able to speak to each and every one of you. And I hope that this message it finds you it finds you well. Meet me on tonight in Second Kings. The chapter is 18. Second Kings chapter 18, and we'll begin reading at verse one. Again, that is Second Kings chapter 18. And we'll begin reading at verse at verse number one. A very familiar uh, king uh, is going to be the subject of our story on on tonight. Uh, verse one says this: Second Kings eighteen it says, "In the third year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, Hezekiah the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, he began to reign. He was twenty five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for twenty nine years in Jerusalem." His mother's name was Abai, the daughter of Zechariah, and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that David, his father, had done. He removed the high places and broke the pillars and cut down the Asherah, and he broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the people of Israel had made offerings to it, and it was called Nehushtan. He trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel, so that there was none like him among all the kings of Judah after him nor among those who were before him. For he held fast to the Lord. He did not depart from following him, but kept the commandments that the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him wherever he went out, and he prospered. Watch this. He rebelled against the king of Assyria and would not serve him. He struck down the Philistines as far as Gaza and its territory from Watchtower to fortified city. In the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hosea, son of Elah, king of Israel, Shemaneser, king of Israel, came up against Samaria and besieged it. And at the end of three years, he took it. In the sixth year of Hezekiah, which was the ninth year of Hosea, king of Israel, Samaria was taken. The king of Assyria carried the Israelites away to Assyria and put them in Hala and on the Haber, the river of Gozan, and in the city of the Medes, because they did not obey the voice of the Lord their God but transgressed his covenant, even all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded, they neither listened nor did they obey. So what we have here um, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the introduction of Second Kings chapter 18 is we're introduced to a man by the name of Hezekiah, and he is 25 years old, and he begins to reign over the people of Judah. Uh, most of the time when we talk about Hezekiah, we talk about what happens in chapter 20 when Hezekiah, he his word that he he is worth that he is about to die, and he asked God for more time, asked God to spare his life, and God gives him fifteen additional years of life. But before that prayer ever happens, there's something else that happens in the life and in the reign of Hezekiah that I believe is very important. I believe is pertinent and valuable uh, to us as Christians on on today. So what we have here, Hezekiah is king of Judah, and the people uh, and the Assyrians. They are now, uh, they have now taken captive the people of Israel, uh, also known as the Assyrian captivity. And they have conquered the people of Israel, and now they are working their way south towards Judah. And they are conquering people after people. They are conquering nation after nation. And what happens is what we're about to see, they're about to come knocking on Hezekiah's front door. Watch this, meet me. Uh, drop down to verse 28 of chapter 18. Verse 28. I'm on chapter 18, and that's where we'll begin reading again. It says, Then the Rapshika, they stood and called out in a loud voice in the language of Judah. Now, do not let that word scare you. That is just another word uh, for high-ranking military officials. So uh, the best of the best of the Assyrian army, they come to Judah. And we hear, hear what they have to say. It says, Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, 
Do not let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you out of my hand. Do not let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord by saying, the Lord will surely deliver us, and this city will not be given into the hand of the king of, of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria, make your peace with me and come out to me. Then each one of you will eat of his own vine, and each one of, each one of his own fig tree, and each one of you will drink the water of his own cistern, until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of grain and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of olive trees and honey, that you may live and not die. And do not listen to Hezekiah when he misleads you by saying, the Lord will deliver us. Has any of the gods of the nations ever delivered his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Serebaim, Hana, and Ezra? Have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who among all the gods of the land have delivered their land out of my hand? That the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand. But the people were silent and answered him not a word. For the king's command was, do not answer him. Then Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, who was over the household, and Shebna, the secretary, and Joah, the, the son of Asa, the recorder, came to Hezekiah with their clothes torn and told him the words of the rapture. So what we have here, as was mentioned earlier, Hezekiah is king over Judah, and Judah is the southern portion or the southern kingdom, and the northern kingdom has already been taken captive by the nation of Assyria, by the kingdom of Assyria. Uh, so now they're, they have, they have taken over the northern kingdom, and now they are working their way southward, and they've come to Jerusalem. They come to exactly where Hezekiah is, and the king, he sends his best military officials, high-ranking military officials, and they go and they let the individuals that work right under Hezekiah know that do not allow Hezekiah to deceive you. We know that Hezekiah is going to say that we should trust in the Lord, the God of Israel. But the people of Assyria, they say, do not allow Hezekiah to deceive you because the people we have conquered, they had gods as well. They had gods that they trusted in. They had gods that were supposed to deliver them. They had gods that were supposedly uh, full of immense strength and, and, and full of immense power. But those gods failed, as you can see. So just like their gods failed, your God is going to fail as well. Do not allow Hezekiah to deceive you, but rather follow us and make an alliance with the people, with the people of Assyria. That's where we are thus far in this story. Now, these men that work under Hezekiah, they are so distraught that they begin to rip and tear their clothes, and they take this word. They take this word to their king, Hezekiah. Watch what happens in chapter 19, uh, verse 1, when Hezekiah gets this news. It says, as soon as King Hezekiah heard it, he tore his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth, and went into the house of the Lord. Now, Hezekiah, after he receives this news, he becomes distraught as well. Because let me tell you something, a tactic of Satan is, Satan will cause you sometimes to believe a lie by sprinkling a lie with truth. Let me prove that. When you have the rapture coming to Jerusalem, coming to the people of Judah, they come making them believe a lie by sprinkling on the lie true. It is true, in fact, that the Assyrians have conquered nation after nation, people after people, king after king. And, and these people, they had gods as well that they trusted in. And it would seem as if these false gods had failed. That's true. However, the lie in this is your God is not able to deliver you. So although the lie is there, the God of Israel is incapable of delivering Judah from the Assyrians. It is sprinkled with truth. And because of this, Hezekiah, he tears his clothes and he goes into a state. He goes into a state of mourning and he goes into a state, a state of depression. And, and rightfully so. This man is 25 years old. He is running a kingdom. He is trying to make sure that everything is in order. He is trying to listen to the voice of God. He's trying to tear down uh, all of the monuments that were made in honor of false gods built up by his father. He is trying to renew Judah. He is trying to make sure that Judah is in good standing with God, that they are making sure that they are walking according to the covenant that God gave them. He is making sure 
that God's people are doing right and that they remain in good standing with God their Father. All of that comes, all of that comes with pressure. And in the midst of this, an enemy rises up that causes him to be outnumbered, causes him to be outweaponed, causes him to be outmanned, and causes him to be, causes him to be fearful. And rightfully, and rightfully so. Now watch this. Drop down to verse, drop down to verse number eight. Watch what happens. So we've looked at the Rapshika's first message. They come back and give another message to Hezekiah. Watch what they say. The Rapshika returned and found the king of Assyria fighting against Libna, for he heard that the king had left Lachish. Now the king heard concerning uh, Sarhaka, king of Cush. Behold, he has set out uh, to fight against you. So he sent messengers again to Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall you speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah. Do not let your God, in whom you trust, deceive you by promising that Jerusalem will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all the land, devoting them to destruction, and you shall be delivered. Have the gods of the nations delivered them, the nations that my fathers destroyed, Gozan, Haran, Rasheth, and the people of Eden who are in Telazar, where is the king of Hamath, the king of Arpad, the king of the city of Serevaim, the king of Hena, or the king, or the king of Eva? Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah, he went up to the house of the Lord and he spread it before, before the Lord. Now, I want you to realize that Hezekiah has reached a point in his life where there is nothing that he can do. As was mentioned, he has been ruling over Judah for a short amount of time. He's only, when he, when he took the throne, he was only 25, only 25 years old. Young age, huge responsibility placed on his shoulder. And now the people that he has been put to rule over, they are now in danger. And the people that are coming against him, the Assyrians, they have a record of being violent. They have a record of being successful in battle, being successful in war. And they have conquered nation after nation, king after king, people after people. And they are saying, the people we have conquered in our past, they had gods too. If they had gods who they trusted in and they failed, why do you believe that the God you serve and the God you trust in will deliver you out of the hand of the king of Assyria? What words coming from the mouths of the Assyrians? And Hezekiah, what Hezekiah does, he does something that I want each and every one of you to do. Every time you go through life and you go through difficulty, and not only difficulty, but you go through success, you go through failure, you go through high, you go through low, you go through mountaintop, and you go through valley. I want you to keep this in your mind. Because it's going to change. It's going to change your life. First of all, Hezekiah, it says, he takes this message and he spreads it before the Lord. A lot of times, whenever we have a problem, we take it to people. And we take it to people who can only provide a listening ear, but they cannot provide a working hand. We take it to people, they can only hear us. They can say that they're sorry for what's going on in our lives. They can, they can try to be empathetic. They can buy, try to be sympathetic. But within their own right, within their own merit, within their own power, within their own knowledge, they cannot do anything for us. Hezekiah, he takes it not to someone who can't, but he takes it to the only one who can. And he spreads it before the Lord. And watch what he says. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord, the God of Israel, you are enthroned above the cherubim. You are God and you are God alone. Of all the kingdoms of the earth, you have made heaven and earth. So Hezekiah, first of all, he acknowledges the fact that he knows who he's speaking to. And every time you pray, child of God, I need you to acknowledge the fact that you know exactly who you are talking to. You are not 
are lost or you are not doubtful, you are confident in who it is that you are speaking to, and not only do you know who you're speaking to, you know exactly what you, you what he has done. You know his record. You know what he is capable of. When I open my eyes and I look around and I see uh, this planet, I see the earth functioning in harmony. I look into space. I see the stars. I see the sun. I see the moon. I see other planets. I understand that everything that functions, it functions in unison. It functions in harmony. It, it, is, in, it is in motion. And it is protected. And it is sustained by the one true and the living God. So when I acknowledge the fact that God, you are God alone, and God, you are the one that made the heavens and the earth. What I am saying is, God, I need you to do what only you are capable of doing. When I acknowledge the fact that, God, you are God alone, that means I am only coming to you, and I'm trusting you to do what only you can do. I'm not going to any man because if a man was capable of doing it, I would go to a man. I'm not, think, I'm not going to keep it on myself. I'm not going to trust in myself. If I was capable of doing it, I would have no reason to go to God. But in this case, Hezekiah recognizes that, God, this is too big for me, but this is nothing to you. And to prove that it is nothing to you, I know that you are the God that made the heavens and the earth. And God, if you can bring order to this planet, if you can bring order to this universe, I know for a fact and with all the surety and without any type of doubt that you can bring order to my life. If you can set the world in order, you can set my life in order. So not only do I acknowledge who God is, I acknowledge that he is God all by himself. And when I acknowledge that he is God all by himself, I am trusting him to do what only he is capable of doing. And to give him a comparison, let him know that you have seen what he has done. And what, and what I find encouraging about this is I can open my eyes and see the power of God. I can look outside and see how powerful he is. I can open my Bible and I can look at all the, and look at all the, the miraculous feats that he performed. But what I'm grateful to know is this, that's not, that's not the extent of God's power. That's not the end of God's power. For Paul says, he is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that I could ever ask or see. So when I look around, when I look up, when I look down, when I fathom and I imagine, I can imagine greatness. But God can exceed my greatest expectation. So when I go to him, I first take what is bothering me, what is too big for me, and I lay it at his feet. And I say, God, you are God all by yourself. And I know for a fact that you are the one that made heaven, that made heaven and earth. Now watch this, verse 16. He says, incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Then he says, open your eyes, O Lord, and see, and hear the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to mock the living God. Truly, O Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste the nations and their lands, and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were not gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they, they, uh, therefore they were destroyed. So now, O Lord our God, save us, please, from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you, O Lord, are God. And that you are God alone. So Hezekiah, after acknowledging that he knows who God is, after acknowledging that he knows what God has done, he says, God, I need you to look at our situation. And he said, I need you to hear what these people are saying. I need you to see what they are doing, what they have done, and what they are trying to do. And God, I need you. I need you to step in and save and save your people. Child of God, I need you to take this same mentality and every circumstance, every facet of your life, I need you to go to God just like this. When you go to God, acknowledge that you know who he is. Acknowledge that you know what he has done and let him know that there is nothing that is too hard for you. There is nothing that is too difficult for you to accomplish. There is nothing you cannot do 
for God. You are God and you are God alone. So in this circumstance, I need you to move me out of the way and I need you to show me your power. God, when I look around, I see, I, I see, I get a taste of how powerful you are. But God, I know that it's not a limit to how powerful you really are. For your power exceeds my greatest imagination. So you let God know that is how you feel. That is your expectation. Let him know there's nothing that is too hard for him. Let him know that you know he specializes in miracles, that he can perform the impossible, and let him know that your trust, that your trust is in him, and it's in him alone. And watch this. Drop down to verse 32. I'm almost finished, and watch. Watch what happens. After Hezekiah prays his prayer, look at God's response. Verse 32, he says, Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city or shoot an arrow there or come before it with a shield or cast up a siege mound against it. By the way that he came, by the same he shall return, and he shall not come into this city, declares the Lord. For I will descend, defend this city to save it for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. And watch what God does. You have Assyria. They have taken over the northern kingdom. And they have worked their way down to Jerusalem's door. And they have said, we have conquered people after people, nation after nation, king after king. What makes you think Hezekiah is going to be any different? What makes you think that you should place your hope and your confidence and your trust and your faith in this God of Israel? What is the God of Israel going to do that these other gods were not capable of doing? What makes your God so great? What makes him so powerful? Don't let Hezekiah fool you into believing in him. But Hezekiah, although he is afraid, although he is scared, although he is anxious, he is stressed out being a young man, trying to make sure that God's people are taken care of and they are walking in step with God. He tears his clothes and he takes his problem to the Lord. He takes it to the Lord. He doesn't take it to any man, but he goes into the house of the Lord and he spreads it before him. And he says, God, you're God. You're God all by yourself. And he says, God, I know that you're the creator of the heavens and the earth and you sustain them. Then he says, God, open your ears here. Open your eyes and see. And then he says, save. Save your people. And when you go to God like this, watch how God You're listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. What you've done for me in my life I just want to say what you really mean to me You're my everything, my joy and peace You're the reason why I sing Lord, I don't deserve anything you've given me So I just gotta say thank you Whoa. What's nice with your love and grace So I just gotta tell you this mm-hmm. I will always
You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. This is a program reminder. Stevie B Media Production presents. We're airing live shows here on Blog Talk Radio. The telephone number to the live show is 713 955 0508 and the website is www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash gospel light radio show on Tuesday I'm hosting a live show on what a word of the Lord radio show this show will air every second third and fourth Tuesday of the month the second Tuesday of the month the show will air from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time and we have a guest speaker from the Brotherhood of the Church of Christ who will be making their proclamation of the gospel of Christ and also during that show, we have the Community Corner segment. That segment is designed for small business owners and entrepreneurs who have products and services for our communities. Also have two co-hosts on this show, Luke Gilbert, he's the evangelist for the Oak Park Church of Christ there in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Isa Mullins, he serves the Church of Christ there in Cary, North Carolina. Then on the third Tuesday of the month, that show will air at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And my co-host is Dr. Therica Lane. She's a board-certified obstetrician and gynecologist, and she serves with the Church of Christ there at the Kennedy Heights in Cincinnati, Ohio. And she'll be hosting her show, Conversations with Dr. Lane. And then on the fourth Tuesday of the month, that show will air at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And my co-host is Kelly Fletcher. She serves with the Livingstone Church of Christ there in Indianapolis, Indiana. And she'll be hosting her show, The Kelly Fletcher Show. Then on Thursday evening, I'm hosting a live show, The Gospel Light Radio Show. And that show will air from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And there are eight co-hosts on that show, Clay Phillips, Dr. Frank Washington, Junior, Steve Cordo, Manuel B. Jonathan, and Glenn McMillian, Stanley Hubbard, Yusuf Ford, and Brian Christian Coleman. And these gentlemen will be presenting lessons from the Word of God, and each week I have two of my co-hosts on the air with me. I'm also taking a question from my social media platform on Facebook called Shout It Out. I'll be posing to one of my co-hosts on that live show as well. Then on Friday night, I'm hosting the live show Stevie B's Acapella Gospel Music Blast. This radio show is the 2022 recipient for the Nakama National Academy of Christian Acapella Music Artists Award for Outstanding Achievement in Record or Radio. That show will air from 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. And on this show, I'm playing some of the world's greatest acapella gospel music artists, Sweet Sounds of Voices. We're also interviewing artists, producers, and writers, etc. We're also debuting new music and featuring old music on this broadcast as well. And every third Friday of the month, I'm doing my Top 20 Countdown show. And we also have on-demand episodes. There are just a variety of musical platforms that you can listen to to find these radio shows, wherever you're getting your favorite podcast from. Just search for Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Apple iTunes, YouTube, just to name a few. And we also have recorded version shows. These shows were album debuts mostly, so the playlist is the same that's on these live shows here on Blog Talk Radio. And these shows can only be heard on iHeartRadio, on Deezer, and also on Amazon Music. Just search for Stevie B recorded version shows. We also want to thank our sponsors who are sponsoring these radio shows. If you'd like to become a sponsor, just contact my sponsorship manager, Michelle Marco, from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Her telephone number is 954 687 47 Zero five. The three E's of Stevie B Media Production is the objective of this broadcast. We want to educate, we want to edify, we want to encourage you in a study of God's Word. And that will conclude our program announcements. You're listening to What I Word from the Lord radio show. Stay tuned. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. And if you miss me from singing, sing. And you can't find me nowhere. Glory. Come on up to glory. glory. I'll be singing the best. Yes, I will. And I know the Lord. He will grieve me. Over yonder. Over all the other shores. So glory. glory, I'll be praising the best. I'll be praising the best. Her minister, Savior, 
to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Give your attention to the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now my co-host, Isom Mullins. Oh, good evening, and God bless you to everyone listening tonight. I want to, before I get started, I want to send a shout out to Brother Steve Butler for continuing to give uh, people like myself a platform to proclaim God's word. There is so much noise in the world today. So many people are trying to tell you something. They're trying to send you messages. They're trying to reach you. They are wanting your attention to buy this, to purchase that, to hear this and read some new fact, to look at some new trend. So much negative news, murders, gossip, fashion, technology, so many things coming at you at the same time, but God sent me this evening to tell you one simple short message, but the most powerful. He said, tell them I love them. God's love is infinite, limitless, and unfathomable. No matter how much he gives you, there will always be more. According to Psalms 103 and 11, and it reads, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness toward those who fear him. And in Jeremiah 31 and 3, it reads, The Lord appeared to him from afar, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have drawn you with loving kindness. God's love is immutable and it is changeless. My brothers and my sisters, how quickly human love can turn to hate in a relationship. God's love is not like this. His love is unchanging. 
As God is immutable, so is his love. God's love never changes, even though you don't pray as much as you should. Despite how many lies you told, he still loves you. God loves you in the middle of your sins. And do not let any man, woman, or demon tell you that you are not loved or cannot be loved. In the Song of Solomon, chapter 8, 6 through 7, it says, Put me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm, for love is as strong as death. Jealousy is as severe as Sheol. Its flashes are flashes of fire, the very flame of the Lord. Many waters cannot quench love, nor will rivers overflow it. If a man were to give all the riches of his house for love, it would be utterly despised. Micah 7 and 18 says, Who is a God like thee, who pardons iniquity and passes over the rebellious act of the remnant of his possession? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in unchanging love. My beloved, God's love is holy. Like God, God's love is holy. It is communicated to us through the Holy Spirit. Romans 5 and 5 says, And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. God's love is always an expression of God's holiness. It is also directed towards producing holiness in us. God's love seeks to make us holy. Ephesians 1 and 4 says, Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. In love, God disciplines us, moving us in love toward holiness. The love of God is not a guarantee that we will not suffer. It is the assurance that whatever suffering we do endure is directed toward making us holy by a God who loves us. If it was necessary for Christ to suffer in order to demonstrate God's love toward us, why would we think our suffering is incompatible with God's love towards us? God's love is also sacrificial. God's love is not self-serving, but sacrificial. Love comes at a high cost. And the one who loves is the one who willingly pays the price. Many times we have come to experience selfish love. What can you do for me? How much can I get out of this? And what about my needs? And What about my feelings and this is my money and this is my time and what many people think of as love is really just a form of selfless, selfishness, not pure love. It can be identified by thinking like this. I love you because of the way you make me feel. I love you because of what you do for me. I love you Because of how you make me look. One more, a couple more examples of selfish love. But true love, beloved, is instead marked by thinking like this. I love you because you are valuable and precious. I love you because I want the best for you. Love seeks the best for the other person. Not because of what they can do for you but because of what you can do for them, because they are valuable and precious to God. By understanding this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, Heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, 
treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying it's avoid such people. That was Second Timothy chapter three, one through five. Second Timothy chapter three, one through five. Love is our best defense against sin. The more that we love God and our neighbor, the less selfish and sinful we will be. God's remedy for sin is our love for him. If our love, if our lives, if our minds, if our hearts are overflowing with wonder at the greatness and the beauty and the love of Christ, people will be able to see and feel the very love of God coming out of us. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 15 and 13 says, A greater love has no one than this, than one lay down his life for his friend. Romans 5 and 8, but God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God's love transforms. It changes you. Galatians chapter 2 and verse number 20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and delivered himself up for me. Ephesians 5 and 25 says, Husbands, Love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. Love also costs something. Everything you have today costs something. From the bowl of cereal or the steak that you just ate. From the car you drive to the bus pass in your pocket. From your house you live in or the apartment you have to the clothes on your back. Everything you have and everything you see costs something. But sometimes in life things, they happen and your money stream might dry up or changes a little bit. And you might experience an unfortunate repossession or an eviction. Something that you thought was yours, something that you claimed as your own and Treat it like it was yours gets taken away. But I'm excited to tell you this evening that God does not have a repo truck. He will never evict you from his grace. The charge was paid in blood. The bill was paid in the blood of Jesus Christ. Love had a price tag, but that bill was sent to Jesus Christ, and he came down from heaven and he said, yes. I will pay the cost. And today he is asking you to tell everyone that I love them. The lover is gladly willing to pay the price. By this, the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. 1 John chapter 4, 9 through 10. God's love is also personal. Romans 5 and 8 says, But God shows his love for us that we were still sinners, so he died for us. Romans chapter 8, 37 through 39 Know in all these things that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, uh, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ephesians chapter 2 
4 through 5 says, But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Jeremiah 31 and 3 The Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. My brothers and sisters, there is no force more powerful than the love of our heavenly, than the love of our heavenly father has for us, his children. His love can move mountains. Stop the roaring seas. It heal broken bones and wounded hearts. It can transform lives and set free those held captive by sin and shame. So great is his love for you and me that he sent his only son to die that we might live through him. Dear friends, let us love one another. Tell them I love them. God says this evening to not just tell them that I love them. He also wants you to show them that you love them. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says I love God, but yet he hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. This evening you might ask the question, who is my brother? You might even ask, who is my sister? And yes, I will answer this question, but I'm going to answer it in two different ways. Let us go to Genesis chapter 1. And 27. Genesis 1 and 27. So God created man in his own image. And in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Adam and Eve, being the first man and woman on this earth created by God, we are all descendants from Adam and Eve. So that makes us family. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 14 through 15, it reads, And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. In another passage, Paul speaks of the hope believers have in God who is the savior of all men, and especially of those who believe. Once again, the savior of some men, the savior of a couple of men, the saviors of black men, the saviors of white men, the saviors of Spanish men. No, First Timothy chapter 4 and 10 says, who is the savior of all men, and especially of those who believe, 1 Timothy 4 and 10. John 3.16 says, excuse me, Luke chapter 4, 14 through 21 says, God sent Jesus to earth to die for the sins of everyone. It tells me that anyone and everyone is loved by God. So in understanding that simplistic statement, Sit and I consider everyone on this earth my brother and my sister. No matter where they come from, no matter what they look like, how they sound or the different culture or what they eat or the color of their skin or even the very values that they possess, that they are your brother and your sister and God loves them. And if we claim to love him, we must love everyone too. My brothers and sisters, we are connected by the love of God, and that love is an umbrella that covers us all. Matthew 5, 43 through 48 says, 
You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. For he makes his son, he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and send rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. You, therefore, must be perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. My brothers and sisters, should I hold back? Should I continue to hold back, showing love to my brothers and sisters, when I serve a God that never holds back from me? He touched your head this morning, and he woke you up. He made sure your lungs received the exact amount of oxygen last night so you could breathe. Your heart beat all night in your chest. Your blood traveled throughout your body, and you put your feet on the ground because of the mighty, unconditional, unsurpassed love of God. Someone right now is in a hospital bed and running out of time and has ran all out of friends. Someone out there tonight is trying to raise a family on their own and running out of hope. Someone is walking the streets right now with drugs coursing through their veins, feeling unloved and alone. Someone is deployed in a foreign country not knowing the love of God. And somebody's spouse just left them all alone and they're feeling great hopelessness and somebody just lost their job and afraid to go home. Somebody tonight right now is thinking about suicide because they don't know, never heard of the love of God. Tell them I love them. And when you get done telling them that I love them, show them like I show you. Because I love you with sincerity, patience, and selflessness. Tell them I love them. Tell them <clears throat> I love them and show them I love them. John 13 and 34. A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. Tell them I love them and show them I love them. I want to let you know right now, wherever you are, that you can accept God's salvation right now. You have heard the gospel according to Romans 10, 17, and John 8, 38, 8, 32. What you need to do is according to Hebrews 11 and 6 and John 20 and 31 is to believe the gospel. Luke 13 and 3, you must repent of past sins. Romans 10 and 10 and Matthew 10, 32, you must confess faith in Jesus Christ. According to Galatians chapter 3, 27, Mark 16, 16, Acts 2, 38, you must be baptized. And lastly, Revelations 2 and 10, be faithful unto death. My brothers and my sisters, I pray that something you heard tonight awakens something in your heart, awakens something in your mind, awakens something in your very spirit. Tell them I love them and show them that I love them. Have a wonderful and blessed evening. May God be with you from now and forevermore. Amen. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Our hearts desires must face the winds of doubt. Expecting things from a 
from the Lord Radio Show. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that's our show. I want to thank you for spending a little time with us this evening in a study of God's Word. I want to thank my special guest speaker on the show, uh, Tyler Arm, and also my co-host, Isa Mullins, who both did a great job in their presentations of the Word of God. We certainly appreciate their efforts on the show this evening. I appreciate everyone who's tuning in to this broadcast. What a blessing it is to be able to put these shows on on a weekly basis so you'll get a chance to hear the Word of God being proclaimed. And as you study God's Word, you'll be growing spiritually and your relationship with the Lord will become closer. And that's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, we just certainly appreciate you tuning in to What a Word of the Lord radio show. On behalf of my co-host, Isa Mullins, Dr. Entherica Lane, and Lou Gilbert, and Kelly Fletcher, we really do appreciate your love and support for these programs. I'm your host, Steve R. Butler. Good night, everybody. God bless you. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Oh, no. Listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show.